All right, the plan is simple. Today, we're going to be going into a keyboard challenge with some of the most famous keyboard YouTubers in the space. And we're going to be upgrading the same keyboard. The Wolmir WK61, which for all intents and purposes is probably similar to the GK61, which is probably the keyboard most people have seen before if they wanted to get into mechanical keyboards. Let's get into it. So in this one, I challenge all of you guys to mod a similar keyboard. However, there's a twist. You're all going to get randomized budgets. It ranges from $20 to $60. And we got into a call and then we spun the wheel. Oh. Oh. <laughs> nice. I didn't really get a good number. I didn't get the lowest number. Oh, yeah. ah! <laughs> but I got 30 bucks. Which honestly is not a lot of money considering some things cost more than 30 bucks shipping. I'm not really excited for this. We shall start in a three. Two, one, go shopping! Alright, so this is the keyboard, right? This is the WK61, the Wolmir keyboard. Oh boy. The GK61 is a hot swap keyboard, so that's actually better for us. But with a budget of $30, we're not gonna be able to buy any switches. We're barely gonna be able to buy any lube. And we're pretty much going to have to use household items to get this done. Uh, I don't really know what my plan is, but I'm thinking the silicone port we did last time was about 15, 20 bucks. If we do that again, we're gonna burn almost our entire budget. I'm thinking we're gonna use a lot of tape. You may be thinking, tape, Andy? <sighs> You're so original. Well, I'm thinking, considering the budget is $30, pennies is probably the best kind of bang for buck in terms of weight per dollar or weight percent. We're gonna use some pennies. And maybe we can, let's say, tape that down, however scuffed that may be. But we also need to loop the switches somehow. The switch is in here. Yeah, they're like some kind of red switch. So it's linear, but it's scratchy. I'm thinking, if we just kind of lube the stem by just depressing it. But I think if we do some pennies, some tape, and spend the money on lube, brush, and lube, like 25G0. Yeah, yeah, I think this will work out. I think this will work out. Let's go ahead and uh, take one of these out. So this is using Kale Hot Swap Sockets, five pin actually. So we can swap the switches, but we don't have the money to. Well, let's see how this looks. Let's use one of my custom cables from CableMod. Make sure you use the CableMod link in the description. Ho oh, ho, that ain't bad, that ain't bad. So with these, to take it apart, you gotta take off the keycaps first. Let's just use the tools that are provided. What do we do next? Well, I'm gonna assume that everyone has some form of screwdriver. Okay, let's go ahead and take this apart, let's see what we're working with. But we will also need to remove all the switches to be able to take this apart. This is a, it's a plastic keyboard. It's gonna be hard to defy the laws of physics and the material costs to try to get a full metal keyboard, like an aluminum case, for under 100 bucks. Oh, what? Hold on, this thing has a daughter board. Yeah, so these are the hot sauce sockets. They're not kale. Probably can't really see that, but it's Otemu. Let's go ahead and uh, pretend we're gonna use this. It's great. It's much more sturdy than any other key switch puller you can buy. A few things I'm gonna do. We gotta use tape. This is the key. Tape is gonna make a cheap board sound better. What tape does is it basically eliminates the case sound when the case is made out of cheap plastic and very light and pingy. They use the aesthetics of the shape of the plastic case, but essentially your keyboard is wrapped in tape. It's not stupid if it works. We have to open up all these switches. But I'm gonna do that last because that's gonna take that's gonna take a whole night. I did say that we're gonna use pennies, right? But I don't have pennies. So I made a mistake of accidentally using a $20 bill in a vending machine and it gave me change. That change is right here in the form of a crap ton of quarters because I don't know where to get enough pennies to do this. I'm gonna need a few more quarters. You may be thinking to yourself, Andy, you've basically used the entire budget, but in quarters. Let's just pretend it's pennies, okay? Please, please give me this. Let's go ahead and just, just, uh, so, these are the penny quarters that we put underneath. 
I'm gonna use a tool called a flush cutter, but you can use nail, nail clippers. I don't want lube everywhere. Open this up. If you look at this, it has the slightest bit of amount of oil. If you look at the stem here. I have a flush cutter here from 3D printing. You can use a nail cutter. Once you cut it, it looks like that. So you get just a up, right, over. Here's gonna be another moment where I cheat. I actually have a jar of lube here, a ridiculous amount, but we will be using their brush. Forgot to mention, if you put in code Andy at checkout, you get 5% off. So really the total for the brush, as well as the 25G0 is only 16.35. Uh, you can balance these, but I don't, I really honestly do not think balancing. If the wire is bent, it's gonna tick, it's gonna tick. It's not as precise as lubing switches, so you don't have to worry about it. The housing like so. Goes into the hole, press it down, easy. We haven't lubricated any because I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't want anyone to suffer through that. So we're gonna find a stock switch option that works with this PCB and plate to save you time. We'll probably burn all of our money, but I think it's worth it. But let's go ahead and put some of our switches back, our keycaps back. I'm very curious. This is mean the first time we hear one of the stabilizers. It's not horrible. It's not bad, it's not bad. So this assembly is done, but we're not done with the plate and PCB just yet. Gotta make sure that spacebar's stocky though. So we'll layer this bad boy up, grab our quarter board, connect the JST, which is why I left that gap. Oh, I shouldn't have put all the keycaps on. Dang it. So far, we have built but what will we modded it, all right? Full of quarters, probably adding more ping than anything. <laughs> Let's see how this sounds. Heck yeah. I don't think that backspace could have been saved. So what I'm hearing right now is that there is still ping. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the we're gonna run the numbers, all right? So instead of because our budget is only 30 bucks, or instead of doing three sets of JWICs to cover them all, we're going to just buy. Unfortunately, they sell them in packs of 25. We're just gonna buy two sets. So there's 50 switches in there. This keyboard is 61 keys. So what I would tell you to do is all your number of, just keep it the original switch. But what we're gonna test is how the alpha sound if we use JWIC switches. These are JWIC switches. They're just a very cheap JWK type switch. It says JWIC right there. And they sound very good stock. That's why we're gonna use them. All right, so it's plugged in. This board is primarily made of tape. There's tape on the bottom holding some quarters down. I don't really know why I did that. I don't know if that's gonna affect the sound. I think it's probably gonna add more sound if the board vibrates as you type, considering it's so light. But we've already done it. I've committed to adding pennies, but actually quarters to the bottom of the board. I've taped the bottom of the PCB, which it didn't really affect it this much. It still kind of sounded bad. But we also went ahead and clipped and looped the stabilizers with 25G0, which we bought from Divinity. And the change from the last build and the last config is that I'm using JWIC switches. I bought 50 of them because I can't afford 75. And we put them into all the keys that were hit most frequently. Let's let's do the sound test of this thing. There it is. Oh my God, I've done it. JWIC switches are one of the most amazing stock switches available and they're cheap. They're 23 cents each from Divinity. Before the 5% off using code Andy, make sure you use the link. I didn't have to lube the switches. I know I bought the 25G0, so perhaps we can save money by doing this again, but using not 25G0 or to use dielectric grease and that other lubricant. It is cheaper than 25G0. The tape, and the, the weight at the bottom make you feel heftier, though, except when you drop it. It did an amazing job. I love how these offers sound. This is perfect. I'm very proud of this $30-ish build WK61. And uh, let's see how it compares with the rest of them. I'm gonna tell you right now, mine didn't come out on top, but 
may not come out last to make your own judgment go ahead and watch hippio switch and click keyboard and lewis toes videos and i'll see you in the next one peace